Okay, so here in my second video, I'm going to show you a magnetic equivalent circuit and what are the formulas when you have a magnetic equivalent circuit. So, uh, a magnetic circuit, sorry. So, if you haven't watched my previous video, magnetic circuit 1 uh, IH, BH relation, you should watch it. But uh, look at the description to see the full playlist if I... Uh, it also depends on the time you are watching this. I hope that I finished the complete course and I made a playlist for the magnetic circuit. So, in my previous video, we to I told you what are the relations with when we have current, when we have we have magnetic field intensity, magnetic flux density, and uh, you know that's all. You know I told that in a previous video. Now I'm gonna show you a uh, one equivalent circuit that is called a toroid, uh, one magnetic circuit. So toroid is basically a circuit. Uh, a circle with uh, some area, some thickness. Uh, this isn't maybe the best representation of it. Uh, this isn't the best representation of this. Uh, sir, uh, uh, best representation of the toroid uh, because you don't see the thickness. But I'm gonna try to. Uh, show you here how is it made so it's kind of two circles uh, I don't know something like this uh, so yeah it's kind of so I'm, I don't know it's like a donut uh, you know you have circles you have the inner radius, the outer uh, radius, and um, yeah, and you have the thickness of this uh, of this you know object. Okay, so yeah, I, I think that now you know what the toroid is, what it looks like, like a donut, and uh, for example, we wound. Uh, the this toroid with uh, conductors, so we will have a coil with uh, n number of turns. N number of turns. So now we want to uh, calculate or uh, measure what is the magnetic field uh, dense, uh, intensity in this uh, toroid. So uh, we will measure it from here to here. Okay, now we, we will do it with Ampere's uh, circuit law. Uh, I showed that in my previous video and you certainly studied that in physics or in um, fundamentals of electrical engineering. So here we have the formula. We want a closed pad. So if we put a closed pad from uh, the center of the uh, toroid to over here, then the magnetic field uh, intensity is equal to zero because in this closed loop right here we have no current that goes through this uh, closed loop so the sum is then equal to zero uh, but why uh, now if we want to calculate the closed loop out, uh, out of this storage like this This is when we want to calculate uh, the magnetic field intensity here. Well, the magnetic field intensity out of that array is also equal to zero because you have uh, n times uh, i, n number of 
turns and I going in the black in the white board in this closed loop and then you have n times i uh, uh, currents that goes towards you so you have ni minus ni is equal to zero so basically in uh, the air we don't have any uh, flux so that is kind of an ideal situation of course there are some uh, in reality in practice there are some uh, flux uh, magnetic field in that magnetic fields uh, that goes out of this turret but those are very very small amount of uh, magnetic fields and we usually don't take them serious they are negligible so the we will measure the magnetic field density from here to here so all the magnetic fields uh, I, in idea ideally uh, in ideal situation are stored in here in the torrid in the magnetic equivalent circuit so now you have uh, this uh, ve scalarly uh, multiplied vectors uh, are HDL integral, close, integral from the closed loop and you get this H times 2 PR is equal to N times I so the sum of the currents if we took the closed path from here are n times i going uh, towards the, going uh, here or to, towards the black whiteboard and the, how do you know what is the uh, direction of the magnetic field in density well you took the uh, right hand and uh, in, the, in this situation the magnetic field intensity lines are going uh, clockwise if it was the, uh, uh, if it was you know the other the opposite uh, direction then you will had something like this S sorry uh, if it goes in another direction then it goes uh, counterclockwise so yeah so uh, you would have uh, you in the, in you will have, if you have the opposite direction of the current you will have the current that goes uh, towards you so this will uh, show the direction of the current and then the magnetic field intensity lines goes right he like here but if the current goes like here you would have that the current goes like this but there is another way that you can uh, show the direction of the magnetic field intensity for this uh, with these four fingers you take like these coils uh, put them like this and this uh, um, right thumb is going to show the magnetic field uh, intensity line so it, it's gonna be like this so yeah this is how I uh, usually uh, see the direction of the magnetic field I put uh, these four fingers in the direction of these coils and the, uh, grab the coils and in the this four fingers show the direction of the current if it was the opposite I would just do this and this, this finger shows the magnetic field line uh, direction so when you have a coil I usually do this or this okay now uh, oh, sorry. we get that h 2 pr is equal to ni 2 pr is the circumference but we can say that is hl equal to ni so this is the length of the core of the toroid now hl equals ni number of uh, currents go equals f f is a new quantity uh, it is equal to ni 
and it's called magnetomotive force. So, and the unit for the MMF, I, I, I call this MMF, it's better, like E, small e is EMF, not electromotive force. So, MMI, MMF has a unit called ampere turn. One word, ampere turn. Okay, so now when we want to calculate the magnetic field intensity, it is equal to number of terms uh, uh, multiplied by the current going uh, into the coil divided by the length of the toroid. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, the circumference now of the toroid. But it's, uh, this is uh, basically uh, for all magnetic circuits. This is uh, one usual uh, magnetic circuit. And uh, you know that B is equal to mu, the permeability of the medium, times the magnetic field intensity, and we get that uh, B is equal to mu times N times I divided by L. And the unit is Tesla, of course. Now we have a new uh, we have a new quantity, very important, called the magnetic flux. And it is equal to uh, the integral uh, B dA. These are two vectors. This is a scalar, but we usually, uh, we usually uh, in electrical machinery take this as a vector. The direction of this uh, flux is the same as B. And also, if H is in this direction, the B is also in this direction. Okay, now, B times the, uh, the derivative of the area is equal to BA. Usually, this is, you know, uh, don't worry about this. So, uh, magnetic induction times the area of this, the thickness of this toroid, gives us a quantity called the magnetic flux. And uh, it is, its unit is Weber. Uh, Weber is a measurement for magnetic flux. Okay, and uh, if we know the B is equal to mu n i divided by L, we can calculate flux in another way. That the magnetic flux is equal to mu times n times i divided by L. As you can see, the longer the the longer the uh, circumference of the toroid, the smaller the magnetic flux. The bigger permeability, the smaller, uh, uh, bigger the flux. Uh, n times A. We change the B with this formula and uh, multiply it with the area. And if you have a bigger area of the toroid, the bigger, bigger the flux. And uh, we put this mu times a uh, here, so this is uh, like a double fraction. Uh, now, this L divided by mu a, this here, this fraction, double fraction, is practically the same as here. You, uh, I don't, this is, you know, elementary school mathematics, so I put uh, a mu a uh, in the denominator of the denominator. So, this here is equal to uh, this capital R uh, but with this cur cur curly lines and this is called uh, and this is called the reluctance of the magnetic pad. And Ni is equal to F, the MMF, magnetomotive force, divided by the reluctance. Here, uh, uh, here is the formula for the reluctance. L uh, divided by mu times A. So, the reluctance here is like the resistor or the resistance in electrical circuits. Uh, but here we have the resistance of magnetic circuits uh, and here 
uh, are we have the resistance of the electric circuits. So the longer the magnet, the longer this uh, toroid is, the bigger the reluctance or the resistance of the magnetic path is. The wider, uh, the bigger the area, bigger the air, uh, as long as area is bigger, the reluctance is going to be uh, smaller. And if we have a mu that is uh, bigger, we have a smaller reluctance. We want to have a small amount of reluctance in our uh, magnetic circuits. That's why uh, you have to measure that's why you have to take some better materials than the other which have smaller reluctance but that I'm going to show you in my next video so sm smaller the reluctance the better uh, okay uh, now here are some analogies you, you could uh, use so we have MMF the magnetomotive force which we provide produce with the number of turns and the, num the amount of current we, uh, we give to the, uh, these coils. Uh, number of turns of the coil wounded around the toroid and the, or any magnetic circuit, sorry, and the, uh, the multiplied by the current. So that's like the voltage in an electric circuit. This is a magnetic circuit and this is an electric circuit. The flux is equal to, as you can see, uh, F, the MMF, divided by the reluctance. And the current in electrical circuit is equal to e, e, e divided by the resistance. Okay, and uh, here we have a reluctance. The longer the magnetic circuit worse for us and if you remember uh, the formula for the resistance it was R equals the length of the wire uh, uh, sorry the conductor divided by sigma A so here is the specific conductance so the better, uh, the higher the conductance, or the, uh, the more the wire, if it's more conductive, then the resistance is smaller. The permeability, if this is higher, so the reluctance is smaller. Uh, if the area of the wire in an electrical circuit is uh, thicker, uh, or uh, yeah, if, the, if you have a thicker wire, you will have a smaller resistance. That's why when you have a lot of current, uh, bigger, uh, I mean thicker wires, and for smaller current you have uh, thinner wires. And if, that's the same analogy. Uh, you shouldn't mix this up, but it's an analogy. So yeah, this is how the flux is produced. All these formulas you should know, and uh, that's it for for this uh, video. And in my next video, I'm going to show you the magnetization curve. So thanks for watching, and see you in my next video. And after that, we're gonna do uh, two examples. So, uh, see ya.